get straight to your your chapter in the book. I mean, yeah. it is it's the first chapter in the book, and it's okay. probably the most optimistic chapter in the book. Yes. You say that cancer could be beaten in a generation. Yeah. yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> it is a brave, and I know it could be almost be considered um, a challenging, uh, optimistic statement. But I, I do believe we are living in through really um, incredible times in cancer research, and sometimes in life. It's difficult to see things that you're living in. It's easier to look back and, uh, and see what's happened. But if you just see what's happened in our own lifetime, it really is quite incredible. And I'm very optimistic over the next 10, 20, 30 years, we, we, the rate of progress will be even more phenomenal. What sort of advances are you thinking in particular? What, what is so phenomenal at the moment? You know? Well, when you think of chemotherapy for cancer, it really only started very much in the 50s. You know, one or two patients developed in the 60s. So, you know, when I was born, there was virtually no patients cured of cancer by chemotherapy. And in that time, we've now got to a situation where the vast majority of people with many types of cancer can expect a long-term cure, which is fantastic. Now, of course, there are many, many challenges still. Within the area of solid tumours, we've seen great progress in breast cancer now. Um, survival rates increased by about 40% in the last 10 years, 10, 15 years. But we still have big challenges in areas like brain tumours and so forth. But we're starting to see there's been so much investment in, in science of cancer. We now know what makes a cancer cell grow the way it does, and we're starting to target those pathways, beginning to see those drugs make a difference in some of those areas. And I, I, I do believe, I am optimistic, that we will start to make relentless and very positive progress. Uh, you probably remember 10 years ago, Bill Clinton and Tony Blair publicizing the first genome, when we sequenced the human genome. Um, and that, of course, took many years, many millions of pounds. We're now down to a situation where we could sequence your DNA or my DNA probably in about three days. Um, it cost a lot of money still, but it's coming down in price dramatically. And it's probably likely, uh, probably covered in other sections in the Optimist book, that all of our genomes will be sequenced in due course. Now, what that allows us to do is it can, we can take a person's DNA and that the DNA of their cancer cell and we can find that the specific damage that's been done in that cancer cell and target it. That sort of technology is now possible. The challenge, of course, one of many challenges is the cost of that. Uh, and we then, of course, have to develop the drugs to target all those lesions. So there's still many um, challenges ahead, but we have a lot of capability now. Now, you write in the chapter that last year the DNA of a cancer cell was completely sequenced and then compared with the normal DNA yeah. of the person from which the cancer was derived. Could you try and explain to me in layman's terms how that could be used to, to target a cancer? Yeah. Well, your DNA that you got from your mum and dad is, is basically a string of molecules 3,000 million long. That's what, 3 billion base pairs. And um, so... What this technology does now is that you, you sequence it, all the computer aligns it, and then you can sequence your tumour, and you look for the differences in the tumour cell, where the, where the mutations have occurred. And then you can say, oh, look, this mutation has occurred in this gene that's involved in signalling into the cell. So let's try and give a drug that blocks that pathway, or a drug that tries to repair that. That's the sort of way that cancer biologists are now thinking, from the example I gave you in leukemia, specifically designed for that. So what we're now seeing is that the, the big challenging cancers that we have, like brain cancer, pancreatic cancer and so forth, their genomes are now being sequenced and we're working out how the damage has accumulated. And now with chemists and so forth, we have to work out ways to try and repair that. Cancer is very, very common, unfortunately. A third of us predicted to get it. And, and actually, cancer is becoming a bit more common because, of course, we're all living so much longer. And cancer is very much a disease of ageing. So the, the older you get, the more your DNA gets damaged by the environment, and cancer becomes more common. So we are victims of our own success, as you say. Um, but... Uh, I, I think 
what we want to have is a situation where cancers arise and we can give the right treatment and as I say not cure is a difficult concept control it so that the patient can live with it uh, and then it's not becoming a problem and you know just one point to make is that of course these advances that we've seen in cancer research have been very dependent on a number of factors and one is there's a great generosity of the British public and around the world and investing in, in this research which is expensive and these charities cancer research UK, Le Le leukemia they're the biggest cancer charities in the world uh, and that's a remarkable fact and it's only if we keep investing and working together that this final ambition that i'm talking about can of course be achieved and that is important